Howdy howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In today's video we're going to talk about colors the way that computers see colors. So we're going to first start talking about uh, hexadecimal byte. Remember we did talk about a byte before, a byte was 8 bits. So when I'm looking at bits I'm looking at 8 positions that are either zeros or ones. And what we notice is that when we talked about hexadecimal, hexadecimal was base 16, which we noticed was 2 to the 4th power. And so what we notice is that we could take this group of 4 bits, which is 8 plus nothing plus 2 plus 1, which is 11, and we remember that 11 was really a capital letter B in the hexadecimal digits, because the numbers 10 through 15 were related to the letters A through F in order to have a single digit to represent it. And then over here I've got 4 plus 2 which is 6, so this would be 6b in hexadecimal. What we notice is that we can use two hexadecimal digits to reflect one byte. And so this is going to be important for us to notice. Also remember that when I'm talking about a byte, a byte was 8 bits, so that's really 2 to the 8th or 256 digits, or 256 values, I should say. In other words, we're going to be talking about values that start at 0 and go up to 255. So the next thing I want to do is I actually want to take a look at an old picture tube from an old TV or a CRT or a monitor, and what I notice is that the colors in a picture tube come in three values. They come in red, green, and blue. So I've got a red, a green, and a blue value for every pixel or picture element on my TV. And this is heavily magnified right here. This is closer to what it looks like. And notice that I can add varying amounts of blue and it goes from being this orangish color to being this kind of bluish purplish color. And whenever I'm doing a picture tube, I can combine elements of red, elements of green, and elements of blue to create different shades of color. And that's how computers create color. So for our purposes, when we talk about an RGB value, we're talking about a byte of red. We're talking about a byte of green. And we're talking about a byte of blue. A byte of blue. And so we're doing these hexadecimal values, which means the red component can be anything from 0, 0 all the way down to FF, which is 255 in hexadecimal. So we're going to be using a two-digit hexadecimal number to represent the red component, the green component, and the blue component of a particular color. So we're going to have six digits where the first two digits represent red, the next two digits represent green, and the next two digits represents blue. So if I were to have something like full intensity red, and no green, and no blue, then that would be a true red. But if I was to take this full intensity red and mix it with full intensity blue with no green, then I end up with something that's going to be a purple. And if I were to take no red along with some full intensity green and full intensity blue, this actually ends up being a cyan. And the thing that we have to remember is that we're adding light. We're not adding colors. So we're used to seeing where if I add red and I add blue, that's going to make a really dark purple. In our purposes, adding red and this actually makes a very light purple, which we call magenta, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So I want to talk about this difference between this, but I first want to talk about what true white is for us. Keep in mind that white is supposed to be as bright as we could ever see it. A white is supposed to be bright, and a black is supposed to be dark. So when I think of something being dark, I'm thinking about something that has no intensity. So in other words, it's going to have no red, no green, 
and no blue. Whereas if I think of something that's bright, it has to have the full intensity, and so I'm going to have full-on red and full-on blue and full-on green, red, green, and blue. So when I'm looking at something being white, I want these numbers to be as big as possible, as close to that 255 threshold. And if I want something to be black, if I want something to be dark, I want it to be as close to that zero value. And what that means is when I want to talk about particular colors, I can talk about shading these colors based on how close they are to the FF or the 0, 0 end because we really have a spectrum. So if I want to talk about something being red or shades of red, I could have full red and no green and no blue or I could have no red, no green, and no blue. So this is going to be the darkest red, and I put red in quotation marks because it's a pure black, and this is going to be the brightest red. So here's my light, and here's my dark. But if I wanted something in the middle, I'd want something where, yeah, the green component needs to be zero, the blue component needs to be zero, but this red component needs to be somewhere between zero and 15. So I could say that it's uh, eight zero. This is really going to be a value of 128 in hexadecimal. So this would be kind of a medium red. And if I wanted something that was going to be somewhere between this black and this medium red, I would choose something between 0, 0, and 8, 0, which would be 4, 0. And so this is going to be a darkish red. And if I wanted to choose something between 8, 0, and F, 0, and I want to choose something between 8 and 15, so I'd probably choose something like 12, so C, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0. And this would be a brightish red. Not as bright as the full red that we would get, but just a, a brightish color of red. And so what this allows us to do is it allows us to come up with a lot of different colors. So an example of what I've got here is the same illustration that I had before. I can select on this. This color that I have here, this is my full intensity red. This is my FF0000. But you can see where we've made some transitions. Here is that 80 red that we were talking about, this shade of red right here. This is really kind of like a very dark maroon. And if I wanted to go even darker than that, I could go to the 40, which is going to be this shade of red. Notice that I get some very, very dark shades of red. Going back though, I can hit here, which is the CC0000. So I can get some very bright shades of red in here. Just by changing the first two digits allow me to change these values of red. And of course I could do the same thing with green. And notice that green is this FF in the center byte. And of course I can decrease it to kind of a regular green, or I can go to a dark green. I can get this to be a very, very dark shade of green, so dark that it's virtually indistinguishable from black. And I can do the same thing with blue. Here's my full intensity blue. If I wanted to go out to 80, then that would be kind of a navy blue, a rather darkish blue. If I went down to this 40, you'd see it's an even darker shade of blue. One of the other things that I can do is I can kind of mix these colors. So if I wanted to take full intensity red, full intensity green, and no blue. So I've got FF for the first byte, FF for the second byte, and nothing for the third byte. That's going to actually get me this yellow. So in other words, red plus green light gives me yellow light. And so if I take that to half the intensity, then I've got this, which is kind of a, a darker yellow, which is called olive in this system. And I could do that to even darker shades of yellow if I wanted to. So I can go back to this full intensity yellow. I could actually make this uh, C0, C0, 00. So it's going to be just slightly darker than that yellow, but still a pretty bright shade. And I can do the same thing with uh, if I wanted to do full intensity red, no green, and full intensity blue. That would give me this fuchsia, this magenta color, which I can cut the colors in half and I get this really nice royal shade of purple. 
And I can do the same thing with no red, full intensity, blue, full intensity, I'm full intensity green, full intensity blue. And this gets us our aqua color. And if I go down to here, I can get teal. Um, different values here, different combinations of values are going to give me different value, different colors. And I can get, you know, really nice cream colors, real nice soft blues, depending on how intense I want the uh, red, green, and blue components. And I can get some really good dark colors as well, all depending on what shades of uh, values I have. And if I want to get some oranges, well, oranges are going to be various combinations of red and green. If I want to get some teals, then I'm looking at various combinations of greens and blues. And if I wanted to get some purples, then I want to add the blue and reds together. Notice that I can get lots of different colors. As a matter of fact, I can get 256 times 256 times 256 different colors just by different combinations of these three bytes. Something else that I wanted to talk about is the difference between RGB, the, the lights that we're adding together, and what's called the CMY system. CNY stands for cyan, magenta, and teal. And so we have this RGB, this red, green, and blue, and this is done by adding lights. The CMY, the cyan, magenta, and teal, are done by adding pigments. And in adding pigments, we're actually making colors through constructive as opposed to subtractive. So if I have a color printer, I usually have a cyan cartridge, a magenta cartridge, and a, why did I say teal, yellow? A yellow cartridge. And this yellow cartridge is what's actually going to help us get these different colors here. So if I take cyan and magenta, you can see here's cyan, here's magenta, and when I add them together, this actually gets me this blue that we were talking about. Similarly, if I take magenta and yellow and add those two inks together, here's magenta, here's yellow, those give me the red. Adding all three colors together will actually get me this black. And so, whereas when we deal with light, we think about adding these lights together to get something that's brighter. When we do these tints, when we're adding colors together, uh, the, the cyan, magenta, and yellow, we're actually adding colors together that get something darker. Uh, we're adding inks together to get something darker as opposed to adding lights together to get something brighter. So the last thing we have is this idea that there's actually quite a bit of discussion about. Is magenta part of the rainbow? So here I've got the rainbow spectrum, and here's our usual Roy G. Bibb. So we've got red, here's orangish, yellow, green, here's our blues, indigos, and our violets. And here is two rainbows added together. Notice that the way that we get the magenta light is by adding this bluish light and this reddish light together. So you can see this magenta overlap right here, whereas it doesn't actually exist in this rainbow. So remember that we're talking about red, green, and blue that we add together to make all the different colors that we were talking about. And if I add red and green together, that's going to get me this yellow. And we saw that happen when we would talk about full intensity red, full intensity green, and no blue. We actually saw that we would get a yellow color. Similarly, if we added green and blue, if we had no red, full intensity green, and full intensity blue, we would end up with something in this region, this cyan or this teal. The question is, when we add the full red and the full violet, the color in between is green, and that causes a problem. Um, what's happening here is our eyes are composed of different colors of rods. We have red rods, rods that are activated when we see red. We have rods that are activated when we see green, and rods that are activated when we see blue. But when only these rods are being activated and the green rods are not being activated, we end up with this magenta color. And what's really interesting is that if you were to stare at this circle for about a minute and then immediately stare at this white space over here, the after image that you would see would actually be the green that you would expect. What happens when these red 
rods and these blue rods are exhausted, then the light is going to be triggering mostly green rods, and that's what gets you that after image. So if you stare at a strongly intensely colored image for a while and then stare at a white background, you'll actually start seeing these after images. If you've ever closed your eyes and rubbed your eyes when you closed them, you see those bursts of red and green and blue. That's actually what you're seeing as well, as you're seeing your eyes rods trying to activate at whatever slivers of light are coming through your eyelids. Light and color are very closely related. And the way that understanding how computers see light and how we see light, they are different. Computers have to do it through some type of value. We have to ascribe a value to a color. And so we ascribe it using the hexadecimal byte. The idea of a value somewhere between 0, 0 to FF being the intensity, something between 0 and 255. And we also remember when we were talking about hexadecimal, we're talking about digits that go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then we have the A for 10, the B for 11, the C for 12, the D for 13, the E for 14, and the F for 15. So we're talking about combining these values to give us these hexadecimal bytes. Color is composed of three parts when we're dealing with a computer. We're talking about the red component, the green component, and the blue component. And so we need a byte to represent each of those values. And that's going to get us about 16 million different colors that we can get represented. What's important to realize is that when we're talking about colors, we're talking about colors through the addition of light because monitors work through adding light together. As opposed to printers, printers work by adding inks together to get something darker. And so when we add inks together to get something darker, that's when we're using that CMY scale, the cyan, magenta, and yellows, to add inks together to get a color, as opposed to adding lights together to make a color. So it's interesting and it's a little confusing about the different ways that we're going to be looking at colors. But what we're going to be doing is talking about how to create our own colors and how to interpret seeing these values as a color. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.